What's up, y'all? How you doing? Welcome to the conversation. Why? You need the courage to adapt. I mean, for a long time, I would think probably like most people, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? If it's tried and true, why change that? But what happened to Blockbuster? Netflix happened. What happened to, you know, early streaming services like Napster? iTunes came along and started selling songs and albums. They upgraded their model. What happened to uh, things like encyclopedias that used to get delivered to our homes back in the day? Transitioned into Wikipedia online. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the conversation. We are about to talk about why we need the courage to adapt, right? Life is always shifting and changing. And as we continue to merge our organic and digital lives together, it's like our reaction time for adapting is getting shorter and shorter. Welcome to the conversation, everybody. Let's talk about it today. Hopefully by the time you leave, if you don't have the courage to adapt or you don't even feel like you need to, maybe this conversation will have you thinking differently by the time you go. Welcome. So, yeah, you know, um, so many industries have been disrupted over the years and it quite possibly came from outdated thinking like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's not to say that that's not a a wise statement, depending on what you're talking about. But with the fast paced world that we live in, it is definitely not a model I choose to rely on anymore because I see things changing right before my eyes. Did you know that Airbnb is considered the number one hotel industry in the world right now? Airbnb wasn't even a hotel industry, but because we have somebody came along with the innovation, with the disruptive innovation to turn our homes into an alternative source for people to stay at and to become a revenue, um, a source of now considered the number one hotel source in the world. Huh? What about the cab industry? Uber, Lyft. They're saying Uber is now the number one limo service in the world. There's some, some are saying that. There are disruptors coming along every day. Coming along every day. And then when those disruptive innovations come along, be careful. Because they can not only push you to change your whole business model trying to play catch up, they could wipe you out completely, Right? Welcome to the conversation, everybody. We are talking about why we need the courage to adapt. This is just my perspective. If you have a different one, throw it in the chat. You know what I mean? Let's toss around some ideas. Let's toss those ideas around because as I pay attention to what life is doing, it suggests that we absolutely need the courage to adapt. We absolutely need the courage to take the next bold step towards reimagining what our industry that we're currently in or what our skill could become if we think outside of the box or if we think ahead of what's happening. If we don't wait for change to come in and then we're scrambling playing catch up, if we're thinking ahead of the game now, possibly you could reimagine, even if it's just a small piece of your industry, it doesn't have to be some grandiose change, right? It could just be the way that you, you could be an updated version of how you approach it. It could be a, a more expansive version of how you approach your industry. You know, just a little small tweak. It takes me back to this analogy where, um, you know, they say that as a golfer, any golfer can relate to this analogy. When you're out there and you're trying to improve your swing, they, the coach might have you just to do a slight adjustment in your hips or a slight adjustment in your shoulders or a slight adjustment on your grip. And so where previously your ball was either hooking, as they say, or slicing, as they say, now it's going straight up the middle just from a small adjustment. Could you benefit from a small adjustment in order to take the next best step with where we are today? Let's see what LaShonda's saying. 
Who would have thought masks would be a part of our work and everyday life attire? Remember, we had to wear pantyhose at one time. Yes. And so now you have industries popping up all over the place, putting together innovative masks. And don't be fooled. I'm sure somebody's coming up with something super dope to 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 accommodate the lifestyle of quarantine, which has become in the moment our day of our way of living. Right. So what is the next step? Are you even thinking about that? Are you thinking ahead of the game or are you thinking about from fear based thinking and reacting to what's happening as opposed to saying, OK, so this is here. Where's the opportunity? This is here. What's next for my particular industry? Am I creating something new? Am I tweaking where we are? Am I upgrading a model? Are we integrating something that's not currently in the digital life because that's where we are? But because something is pushing you and saying, this is the next frontier. They said that for Blockbuster in particular, that when they were trying to tell them to shift in their business model, that they wanted to stick with their old model because where their revenue was coming from was from late fees, right? They were making so much money off of late fees, supposedly, that they didn't want to change their business model. Well, who came along and wiped out the whole idea of a late fee? Netflix. Blockbuster is done. They were a staple for the most part in our movie watching society. They're, they're done because they weren't willing to stretch quicker. The music industry, I wrote about it yesterday, how, um, you know, when we were, when we were going through some massive shifts, especially coming into the 2000s and the digital boom was happening, you know, uh, a lot of companies were so large and had been operating um, the way they were operating for so long. What would make you think that you have to shift, right? What would make you think that you have to change? We've been operating like this for this long. Why we got to shift, you know? And then things like Napster were coming along and pushing the envelope, right? Taking music, pirating music, stealing music in material away. They, they were losing control of the product. They still didn't adapt, right? Very slow. To, to, to hop on top of it, very slow to even respect the change for, for all intents and purposes. Next thing you know, these, these, these digital booms are coming up. You got innovators every day coming out looking for the next best way, the next best thing to do, the next best way to make money, the next best way to make a name for themselves. Whatever the motivation is, it's coming, right? Didn't shift quick enough. Now these companies are crumbling. Lots of record companies went away completely. Huge companies had to merge with other companies. Now they're creating new business models just to keep making money. Three, 360 degree um, record, uh, record contracts. Things that never happened before. Dipping into to revenue pools they never had to dip into. Merchandising, touring. These were things for the artists. Now record companies want a, part, a piece of the pie. Because they had to figure out how to scramble and make a new business model just to play catch up, just to compete. I want to be in that position. Now, this is not a conversation to inspire us, just to think a bit more ahead of the curve, to not be right, reactionary to everything that's happening, which could make us operate out of fear, but to say, okay, this is here. What's the next best step? And then what's the next best step? And then the next time, they're not going to catch me slipping because I'm going to be thinking. I'm going to be strategizing. I'm going to be looking for opportunities to collaborate. I'm going to be looking for opportunities to diversify, whatever the thoughts are. But they don't just keep us sitting here being reactionary and operating out of fear. It pushes us to take the next leap because innovation is coming whether you like it or not. Right. Let me see what you guys are saying. Welcome to the conversation, everybody. Hey, Sean, I designed StinkyStopper.com over 10 years ago. Bless up. Colette, welcome. I believe this thing is going to be around a while, so I'm thinking ahead of the game and focusing on long-term goals around this virus and shift how I connect with others and brand myself. Come on, speak on it in a different way to accommodate this new paradigm. Change is constant. Change is the only thing. The irony. So if we stay in the thought that change is going to change, 
nothing stays the same, at least in this reality, then we can always be just a little bit ahead of the curve or just a little bit feeling more empowered and inspired to do something different and willing, having a willingness to fail forward if that's the mindset that we need to embrace in order to take the leap. In order to stretch, I remember when we were getting the opportunity, and I'm going to come back to more of your, uh, hey, Marquita, more of your comments. I remember when we were getting the opportunity uh, because, you know, things like MySpace were coming in. And then Facebook became really popular in 2008. And there was this guy who came along, and this book is still relevant, even though a lot of the models that he was talking about in the book, like Vine, gone, right? Um, they the philosophy behind why you use the tools still is relevant to this day. And it came down to authenticity. Changed the whole way I approached uh, social media. It's called Crush It by Gary Vaynerchuk. Very first one. Since then, about a decade later, came out with the next book, Crushing It. Just uh, read that maybe last year. Right. Staying on top of the trend, staying on top of the curves. Right. Um, I remember when when. Um, you know, things like the MySpace and the and the Facebook and the Instagram and all this stuff was coming in. And I'm like, oh, and I still won't jump on certain things because you don't have to. Right. You get to choose. You get to choose. But I didn't want to be such an old, outdated beta model <laughs> that I'm like, OK, I, did, I don't want to and I'm not doing it. And look at industry just moving and passing you by. And I was like, you got to learn to adapt, man. What in what way can you bring who you are? to these fresher platforms in a way that works for you. And then you can keep evolving and getting more comfortable in these spaces as you move along. But to just out can be detrimental, not only to your industry, but to your growth personally. Right. Let's see. Anthony says the most dangerous worlds in I'm sorry, the n most dangerous words in the English English language is this is the way we've always done it. I'm telling you, people are getting wiped out left and right with that particular way of thinking. We are we are in another paradigm, as Colette said, it is inevitable. So either we're going to find out how to ride the wave or get left behind. Tasha says, hello. Hey, lady Taz. Hey. Angel says the big three didn't adapt. Uh, smaller autos are now becoming the larger ones. Everybody is, is charged with thinking about adaptation. It is one of the most powerful things that we can do in my humble estimation. It is one of the most powerful things I have done. It has made me more viable. It's made me more, 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 more useful in the marketplace of life because I've been willing to adapt, because I've been willing to do the uncomfortable. And so I'm coming here to do to to you today to hopefully push and inspire you to do the same. Go beyond what I do and inspire me. But sitting here and only being re reactionary, sitting here and waiting for life to change in order for you to change or in order for you to feel comfortable. Good luck. Good luck. Um, Taz says, I am embracing this change and actually allowing myself to step into other passions I've been postponing and doing and manifesting. Good for you. Winter says, you're amazing. Love you, lady. Keep it up. Oh, bless up, Winter. Thank you for the encouragement. Hey, lady. LaShonda says, my bestie and I were discussing our cassettes, albums, VHS tapes. Come on, bring in what, what we didn't have evolved beyond. CDs we still have. What can we do with them? Maybe to make money because nostalgia will always be a hit. Yeah, and some things you can hold on to and eventually they become cool again, right? Everything is, seems to be cyclical at some point. Maybe a refreshed version of it, but a lot of things are cyclical. So you can hold on to some things and then they become, you know, this, this wonderful uh, piece of nostalgia, as you're mentioning, and they're very um become very lucrative pieces and items for you to have just depends but 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 staying flexible to learning staying flexible to what else things can mean staying flexible to how else you can stretch and grow in your current industry or diversify and do other things or pick up other skills and add on to staying flexible can be your biggest asset right now being willing to adapt 
Eric says, always so uplifting and great information, Ro, keeps us all going. Bless up. I'm glad you find value. Uh, Colette says, books I read recently are Do the Work. Thank you for the resources. Uh, Turning Pro and The War of Art. I think the hardest hurdles for individuals to climb over is resistance. Bless up. Let me tell you, I just took in a, a, an exceptional book recently. If you don't want to read, if you feel like you need to drive and just take the information in or listen to it in your headphones, make your bed. Get the book. Short, powerful. Let it motivate you. Let it push you to, to, to change. Let it push you to, to innovate. Let it push you to stretch. And it's basically life principles, but it's by a Navy SEAL. And the way that he is able to convey these very, very potent philosophies and principles, principles is so powerful to me. Powerful for you. Anthony says, I've learned the importance of le leaning into what I bring that can't be taught. My day job will last a lot of jobs. The world will always, the world will always speak on it. Always need artists. This is my focus now. Bless. Um, keep thinking outside the box, everybody. Um, keep willing to uniquely approach and have to be like everybody else. Maybe you take a little bit here and a little bit there. Maybe you give a little bit more of yourself here, a little less of yourself over there. Um, let's see. Lashonda says Rona is on it. She whipped me up the other day. I know it and I love it. Uh, Colette says, they are all by Stephen Pressfield. Thank you for the resource. Tasha says, good talk, coach. I'm growing and working on me, feeling empowered. Thank you. You're welcome. And Angel says, reading originals, how nonconformists move the world. Speak on it. Good resources in here. Woo! Knowledge is wealth. Applied knowledge is wisdom. Mm. Get out there and get it. So I wanted to drop in and just drive a message home of adapting. And I'm going to keep driving this message home this week to see if we can move some mountains, to see if we can stretch in our abilities and creativity, to stretch in, in what you think is possible, to become more than you thought you could be, to even think about it. Some of us aren't even thinking in that way. Hopefully this is like, mm -hmm, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have any questions of me before I get out of here? I think I've already talked enough. <laughs> I've already talked enough. The power of adaptation, the courage to adapt. Life-changing. Life-changing. Does it have to happen overnight? No, your willingness can open doors that you didn't even think about could be there. Just take the step. Do something different. I just, I just, I just switched up on my approach to some of the things that I do as a coach, and it just birthed another idea yesterday. Wasn't even thinking about that when I started the journey. But because I took the step, it opened the door for greater, more possibilities. What would happen if you just took the step? You don't have to have all the answers. We don't, we probably won't have all the answers. But once you take the step, I do believe that the most high goes, mm, you willing? <sighs> More doors. For me, I, when I think about it, that's pretty much how my life has worked. But I had to take the step first. I had to be willing to try something different first. I had to be willing to stretch first. Thank you, Colette. Speak those words into existence. Love what you do. Thank you so much. LaShonda says, found notes from a friend uh, by Tony Robbins for $1 at the thrift shop. Couldn't put it down. I'm telling you, it's, it's so much stuff out here for free. All you got to be willing to do is put the time aside to, to invest in it. Your time. Wealth of information out here for free. Are you willing to invest your time? Where are you investing your time? Where are you investing your attention? Like you don't even have to buy all the stuff we used to have to buy. It's a lot of it is free on the net. I mean, I still invest, but I mean, I, there's so much stuff out there. You don't even have to invest on the level we used to have to invest. 
It's amazing. <sighs> so cute. Hi, Michael Starks. Welcome to the conversation, dear. Taz says, I always, it's always a pleasure and honor to see you, Coach, sending you continued blessings and gratitude. Thank you, Taz. Anthony says, incidentally, Make Your Bed is now on Audible through Amazon Books. Man, I just listened to it. It's amazing. It's amazing. Colette, I just ordered the book, Originals, Great Resource. All right. Hey, hey Shanika, we are just uh, finishing up. Definitely uh, look at the conversation. Lots of jewels in here. Go through the comments. Lots of resources in here. Our next best steps are at hand. Our greater days are ahead of us. Let's make it happen. The courage to adapt. It's been my pleasure, y'all. Until next time, see you tomorrow.